Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? We start the same in every video. I hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing um, Tuesday, I wanna say today. I'm loving my look, let me tell you. I tried out a bunch of new drugstore and high-end goodies. Of course, my full face of makeup will be linked down below, but I'll also keep you guys posted in my I'll keep you posted type of video letting you know if the items worked out for me or not because some things I like, some things I don't like, and then some things I'm kind of like in the middle about, you know? So the title of this video is a bit extreme and it's kind of like, what? Well, um, I will have you know, I never lie to you. I can't even lie if I want to. You will obviously be able to tell like no question. But for today's video, I wanted to speak about uh, certain makeup items that I personally had mentioned that I'm not gonna pick up and then I did pick up. It does not happen a lot. I only have one item here because usually if I say I don't want something and I'm I'm like it's out of like my like out of sight out of mind kind of thing it's my sister's favorite line and then i'm not gonna pick it up um but there was one item that you'll see why i pick it, picked it up but then also there were a decent amount of items that i did mention i wanted to pick up and then after like some time you know like the hype is real the first second something comes out and then like a month or two later you're like i don't really care about that so um i wanted to share with you guys a roundup of about i would say eight ish items that i said i'm gonna pick up in, in one or more of my yes no maybe so videos um, but I didn't pick up and I don't really plan on picking up everything else I said I'm gonna pick up I to the most part I think did pick up to the most part for the most part is it two or four? I think it's four <laughs> Alrighty, let's do this. So I'm gonna start with the item that I said I'm not gonna pick up But I picked up so this right here is from Colourpop. This right here is this little man It's the Star Wars the Mandalorian. That's how you say it, right palette. So firstly Adorable. I had mentioned in my yes, no, maybe so video that I'm not going to pick this up because I didn't feel like I needed this for the reason that this cutie's on it. You know what I mean? If I was really feeling the vibe, I would have picked it up. So I, I said I was going to skip out on it. But then um, my friend from Ofra Cosmetics, Shayna, she kept raving about this, like raving. And she's like, so do you have it? I was like, no, I said I'm not gonna pick it up. She's like, really? I feel like this is so your type. And I was like, I know, it kinda is. I like the color story, but I'm like, I don't know, I don't really need it. She's like, okay. Then like a few weeks later, so she's like, so did you pick it up? I'm like, no. And then when I saw her in Florida, she's like, so did you pick it up? <laughs> I picked it up, right? And then I messaged her, I'm like, I picked up the palette. So I've had this in my life for I would say about a month or so. I've used it like one or two times already and I do like it. I think the color story is actually pretty unique to ColourPop. I know that a lot of times they'll do like a lot of, um, what's it called, monochromatic palettes. But I like that this one right here just has a little bit of everything. We have green tones, brown tones, golds, um, olive tone type of colors, this nice, nice neutral type of camel shade. Um, but yeah, I've been really enjoying this. Honestly, I'm so happy to have it in my life because if I didn't have it, I would be like, okay, fine. But now that I have it, I'm like, whoa. Like, thank goodness she was like, so do you have it? So do you have it? <laughs> Thanks, Shane. I love you, girl. So cute. I'm so happy about this one. Um, oh, by the way, also, if there are ever any items that you're like, Leo, or you need to have in your life, and I'm like, no, I'm not getting, like, push me. Push me on it, because if you, like, really push me to the limit, <laughs> I might pick it up. All right, now let me share with you guys the seven-ish items that I said I'm going to pick up, but I'm not going to pick up. So first up, we have this collection right here from ColourPop. This right here was the ColourPop and Bambi collection. I had mentioned that I did want to pick this up. I think it's so cute. I really did enjoy the Bambi movie as a kid. I haven't watched it in so many years, but then a lot of you guys are telling me it just makes you sad, and I'm like, wait a minute. After I, I read the comments and after I made the video, I'm like, it does make me sad. You know, that movie was a very sad movie. That movie and Dumbo. Like, I cannot watch Dumbo without crying, honestly. I just think it's so sad, you know? And I remember as a kid as well, I was like, what's going on in here? So once that thought kind of came into mind, I was like, I don't know. And then I also kind of felt like I saw this in the store and it was nice and pretty. Everything looked like really put together and all of that. But also at the same time, I feel like I love ColourPop, but a lot of the items that they're releasing these days... I just feel like they like ranked up the price like by so much. I don't remember their palettes being like, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 dollars in the past. I know times have changed. I know, you know, years are passing by and people are, you know, raising their prices for stuff. But when I was at the store, I was like looking at it, I was like, okay, maybe, but then I checked out like the lip liners and like the palette and they were just like, I personally felt like expensive for ColourPop and I know it's in collaboration with Disney's Bambi, so I don't know how the whole money situation works with that. But then I was like, at the end of the day, I don't really feel so attracted to the colors. Yes, Bambi and all of that. And I do always say when brands amp up their packaging or they collaborate with someone, it's kind of it makes you kind of want it more. And normally I'm on those like right away, but I realize sometimes I'm not. And when I'm not and time goes by, I just don't really pick up the item, you know? So with this, I was like very cute, very pretty, but I'm like, I just feel like also they're so repetitive. They've done so many color monochromatic palettes lately. And I kind of feel like it's kind of annoying 
I'll be honest with you. It's like cute and fun and it's affordable and I love that they're kind of like releasing so much for everyone in a way, but at the same time, it's like so overdone. Like I, they recently just released these five, five pan brand new uh, monochromatic palettes, I want to say, but I'm just, I was looking at it and I was like, scroll, scroll. I was just like, it's so overdone and repetitive and boring at this point where it's kind of like, I'm not feeling it, you know? So yeah, I'm not going to pick up the Bambi collection. Next, I wanted to speak to you guys about the Marc Jacobs uh, coffee collection. So I think that's what it's called. Now, this right here is actually a collection that I'm legit waiting for to enter TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Like, I can feel it in my heart and soul that it's going to be there sometime very soon. I would say in the next month. So I'm like lurking the stores, you know what I'm saying? Is that the word? Anyway, so Marc Jacobs recently released this really cute like coffee collection. It includes a compact with blush, bronzer, and highlighter for $34. It's actually $49 originally, but it's $34 now. They also have a extra shot caffeine concealer foundation situation. And then I think that's pretty much in regards to what's included in the collection. Very cute, very unique um, collection in general. And I love the whole concept, but... Yeah, so I was going to pick this up. I was like, what am I saying? I was going to pick this up originally, but then I kind of like started hearing mixed reviews on it. And I usually love to test out products for myself. And even the, and even what I'm saying right now, if, if it doesn't float your boat, it's like 100% totally fine. Because I feel like my opinions might be different than yours. Yours might be different than mine. And, you know, that's what, that's what I think is so beautiful about the world in a way. Because, you know, what worked out for me might not work for someone else. And then what worked out for someone else might not work out for me. Because we're all so different, you know? So, anyway, yeah, I did want to test it out for myself. But then other things started coming out and... That kind of fell on the bandwagon. As time went on, I saw that a bunch of the Marc Jacobs goodies were on sale in Sephora's um, on Sephora's site. And then I saw this going on sale and I was like, you know, if I would end up finding it at TJ, I would probably pick it up for the affordable price tag. Maybe, maybe not. But it's definitely not a collection that I, that I felt the need to pick up for the full price tag. Especially now considering that we will find it at the discounted stores and it's on sale. Like it was cute at the moment, but... It just doesn't look like something I really want to spend that amount on. So it's kind of something I forgot about. I purchased a whole bunch of other things after this collection released some other brands. I'm very happy with those products for the most part. And this one I'm looking at and I'm like, it looks cool, but like, I don't really cannot figure it out, you know? Next, I did mention that I'm going to pick up the Beauty Blender Loose Powder. So this right here is a $34 loose powder, which I think is kind of pricey. Uh, it says it's a soft focus gemstone setting powder. There are pretty solid reviews on a uh, Sephora site. There are five shades to choose from, so I feel like something in the line for everyone, but it's $32, and I feel like I'm I'm not okay paying that amount for a Beauty Blender loose powder. Like, for Huda Beauty, I'll pay that. For Milk Makeup, I'll pay that. For Tarte. But for, for, for Beauty Blender, it's kind of like I see where you're coming from, and I hear that your sponge is the best sponge ever, and I love that, but at the same time, I'm not going to spend $32 on that, especially, especially considering the fact that we've seen tons of their foundations at TJ Maxx and Marshalls, it's kind of like, will it end up being there as well? Um, I just, I know that they're trying to venture out and do different things. They have it solidly down with the sponge, solidly down with the sponge. Uh, so they're doing great with that. And I know they kind of want to venture out and see what else they can do. But maybe if this would have been $22, I would have been like, okay, you know, looks cool. It sounds amazing. I'm sure it performs well too, but I... Um, I skipped. Next we have these products right here from Becca. I'm gonna speak about the Light Shifter Finishing Veil Setting Powder, that's $34. And then I'm gonna speak about their Tinted Moisturizer, which is also, um, not $34, it's $30. So not also, but 30 bucks. So I had initially said that I'm gonna pick these up. It sounds amazing. This was before I even knew that Becca's closing down in September. So I was really excited to see that they're coming out with something new and I'm like, yes, you know, I'm totally feeling this. The powder looks amazing, like so beautiful. And I feel like it's gonna look like so airbrushed and thin and just very like doll-like on the skin in a way. And then I felt like the tinted moisturizer would do well, really well for my skin type just because it's a dewy tint and I have dry skin. I wouldn't say all, all of Becca's complexion products work for me. Not A lot of them actually don't, but I wanted to give this one a go. Now, because Becca's actually going to be closing in September, which I'm actually very sad about because I feel like they really had it in 
like in the bag like if they would have maybe came out with a few other things like this kind of following along this line i think they would have done amazing but yeah they're going to be closing in september as they mentioned so i've been finding a ton of their goodies at tj maxx these products will probably end up being there so for me i'm thinking like a lot of the times i don't necessarily love to use products that you guys can't get your hands on because essentially i love sharing what i love over here so if i'm like oh my gosh this thing is amazing this powder the foundation you guys are like we can't get it like why are you talking about it you know what i mean so it's like in the past i used to love limited edition goodies and from time to time i'll still purchase limited edition stuff but just like with this, it's not going to be available in the next few months. So it's, I feel like, kind of a waste. And then, like, what? If I fall in love with it, I have to buy, like, 16 backups. Do you know what I mean? So because there are so many other powders and uh, tinted moisturizers out now, I'm kind of giving other um, products a go. So that's my reasoning as to why I'm not going to pick these up. If Becca would not be closing in September, though, I would have totally picked this up already. But because they are closing, um, like, when I saw this in the store, I'm like, I'm just not going to pick it up because, you know. I, I personally think there's no point. Next, this right here is a palette that I did mention I'm going to pick up. It's the Tarte uh, Tartlet Juicy Amazonian Clay Eyeshadow Palette. It's actually really pretty. $45. $45. It basically includes a nice amount of neutral shades and then some like pinkier tone shades. I love these tones and colors. I feel like it's similar to what I have on my eyes today. Could you believe that this palette is a drugstore palette? I cannot believe it. I actually applied decently. So yeah, initially I was like, okay, I would really love to try this. I do enjoy Tarte's formula to the most part, for the most part. I keep saying to the most part. I, I thought it's you say it like that, but I've been hearing people say for the most part. And I was like, all right, switch two to four. So that's so funny. Two to four. Jeez. So for the most part, I really do enjoy their formula. So I figured I would really enjoy this. But then looking at this, I'm thinking to myself, I mean, it's a, it's a cute palette. There is somewhat of a vibe to it, but I have a lot of similar tones in my Huda uh, Mini Medium palette and then like from the like new chocolate palette that I purchased from her and then this palette right here is one that I just purchased as well, which has very similar tones and vibes to this palette and this palette right here on my eyes was like less than $10. So for that reason, I'm kind of like really pretty. I'd probably, <laughs> I'd probably get a lot of use out of this one, but for $45, now the time passed by, like I'm maybe waiting on the next nice, bigger, high-end palette that includes such shades in a way. Do you know what I mean? So for that reason, I went ahead and just, um, I'm going to skip out on that one. Then I wanted to speak to you guys about the ColourPop and Animal Crossing collection palettes mainly, but the collection in general. So this was a collection that I was like, yes, need to get my hands on the cutest thing ever. So with the palettes, they're basically quads. We get a neutral quad green, more of like a peachy tone quad and a purpley quad. I never played Animal Crossing. It kind of um, felt like homey in a way, just because I know my sister always played and when we were I would say maybe even in high school or something like a few years ago like I used to watch her play sometimes or she used to always speak about it like oh I love Animal Crossing I love that that like little animals and they just you know do their own thing and she, she's obsessed with animals so it was very fitting for her and I told her that I might pick it up for her but then after I spoke to her about it she's like you know it's cute maybe I would use it maybe not but she's not really that into makeup so then I was like maybe I just wouldn't purchase it but then I was like well maybe I would purchase it for myself because it's so cute so I mentioned this a few times but it's like let's say Animal Crossing right it's not something that I played but I don't feel like I need to play the game to own the palette and then vice versa as well like let's say I do love something I don't feel like I need to own it to justify the fact that I love it do you know what I mean but there's definitely a vibe uh to collections that do speak to you and do have certain like um characters on it or if it's a kind of collaboration with someone there is a vibe there for sure but my point is that one doesn't really need to own something to um love something one doesn't need to own something to continue loving something basically you know what i mean so for these uh the hype was very very real in the beginning i know that this collection was sold out for a little bit and i was like you know i would eventually get it i think you know what it is also i think that when collections sell out really quickly it just pisses me off <laughs> you know what I mean? now with my collection with ofra cosmetics that did happen and a few of you guys were like hello and i totally felt you on that because i didn't like oh the, the basic thing like i didn't expect it to be sold out but i really did not um but what I love about them also is the fact that um, they have their factory in-house. So when it's restocked, it's not like a month later where it's like, okay, I'm kind of over this. It's more like a few days later tops just because their warehouse is in, like in, the, in like where their um, offices are. Like the, their warehouse is all in the same place. So they actually make it there. I do understand the concept of items being sold out because brands don't really know how much is, like how much people are really wanting a certain item. Um... So yeah, it's just a really fine line between that. 
because it's kind of like I'm not gonna make a million pieces if I'm thinking only a hundred thousand would sell, but let's say a million pieces do sell or a million and one, like I guess the brand doesn't really, really know, you know? So yeah, that's the story of that basically. I'm not gonna end up picking this up because I'm not really feeling it anymore. And the last item that I wanted to speak to you guys about is this right here from Estee Lauder. This is their Pure Color Envy um, blush. This is so beautiful. I did mention that I'm gonna pick this up. This is retailing for $32. And I mean, I'll tell you honestly, for me, I love when items are available on Sephora and Ulta's site. I just feel like it's the easiest for me. First of all, with Ulta, you get your points. I mean, and then at the end when they rank up, we get like free makeup and free skincare and free like hair products. Like who doesn't love that, you know? And then Sephora, I also just, I mean, they also have their own program going for them, but it's also just like an easy retailer that I could purchase from, you know what I mean? Plus the stores are like around. Well, at least where I live, you know, it's not that far if I need to like check out an item in the store or if I want to return something or purchase in store. So I think that this is an Estee Lauder exclusive, like it's exclusive to their site. And for that reason, I just, I don't want to just purchase one item. And then sometimes I think to myself, oh, I'll have to pay for shipping and that. And it kind of just turns me off from the whole thing. So I'm like, nah, whatever, it's fine. I mean, there have been tons of blushes that recently released to like Ulta and Sephora site from like... <laughs> various different like amazing brands and there's so much still to try so i'm probably going to just focus on those i mean if this would be sold at sephora or ulta i probably would have purchased this already um but i will also say i believe that this is limited edition so in a way it's also kind of like i want it I'll, i'm sure i'll like it but it's not the biggest deal if i don't have it in my life you know Wow, let me tell you, that was a lot of talking. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was something that that's new to my channel. I've never done anything like this, but I really like, I had a good time making this because I feel like it was a good way for me to connect with you guys. I would love to hear your feedback on everything that I spoke about. Definitely let me know if you felt the same as me, if you disagreed with me. Let me know actually also what product you felt this way towards, where you're kind of like, yeah, I'm gonna pick this up. I imagine it's my collection. Yeah, Leo, I wanted to pick up your collection with Ofra that you did in the summer, but then I realized that it was sold out and I was like, I don't but if it's that let me know actually i'm curious to know but like yeah what collection spoke to you initially and you're kind of like yes but it either got sold out or just time passed by and you you kind of forgot about it and then a few weeks later you're like i just don't care you know <laughs> let me know i'm looking forward to reading your comments and i'll see you guys in my next one bye